Hi everyone, my name is Shamir Jones. And my name is Lakia Chappelle. And we'll be discussing counseling Asian American college students. Well, Shamir, what would you like to start today? Well, Lakia, the first thing I wanted to focus on today was the model minority or the super student image that's perpetuated throughout our American society. The model minority, by definition, is an ethnic minority that is high achieving, hardworking, self reliant, law abiding, as well as having few social and mental health problems, which doesn't seem like too bad of, you know, uh, an image, but positive or negative images are both stereotyping the group as a whole. Um, and then the super student image is more of seeing Asian American students have, as having super abilities in various school subjects. The effects that these images or stereotypes can have on Asian Americans um, can be major and sometimes it can be minor, but some of the effects are it lumps all Asian American cultures together as one, and of course we know they're very diverse. Um, also, it puts pressure on them having to live up to those expectations as what society sees them as, as well as they're not often believed that they confront racial issues mm -hmm. like African Americans or Hispanic Americans, different things like that. They're not seen to have those type of racial issues, which of course they face issues like everyone else. Um, also, they're not frequently identified as minority students. Mm -hmm. Like I read um, that some articles and journals will put minority students in it mm -hmm. at their college and they will totally exclude Asian Americans as mm -hmm. though they're not a minority. So they're often left out. Um, also, students have reported that professors hold them to higher standards. Mm -hmm. So if they're coming into a classroom and they're the same as you, but the professor is holding them to a higher standard, then of course they're going to need to do better in order to probably get the same grade as you. Um, also, um, society views them as being immune from behavioral or psychological distress. So everyone's viewing them as not having issues in behavior or, you know, mental health right. issues. So it would seem like they don't need special services or anything like that, counseling and therapy, and basically it's kind of like ignoring the fact that they have the same issues as others. Mm. So after hearing um, one of the major stereotypes and generalizations that Asian Americans face, what are some of the statistics that you've been able to come up with well, or find? Well, I found a few statistics, but there were a couple that really stood out to me. Um, in the last few years, Asian Americans have been attending and graduating from college well above the overall proportion in the United States. Statistics from the census shows that almost 45% of all Asian Americans at at least 25 years or older have a college degree or higher. Asian Americans make up 5% of the country's population, but 10% or more of the undergraduates at many of the most selective colleges. According to the College Board, Asian Americans represents 46% of the deaths at elite public universities and 13 out of 21 deaths at elite private universities. Did any of those stand out to you? Um, I mean, I see the, the, the death part is kind of, you know, on the weary side because before, like I said, they're believed to not have any psychological problems and of course that would seem like that'd be a major issue that mm -hmm. needs to to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Shamir, let's discuss the Asian American cultures in the in the United States. Um, although we are talking um, about Asian Americans as a whole, um, like the video that we showed at the beginning a little earlier than this um, tape, there um, are several different cultural backgrounds in America. Um, so the Asian American populations in the U.S. Um, are known as, if we're going to separate them and um, define them not as just one culture altogether, um, East Asian would be Japanese, Korean, Filipino, or Chinese American. Southeast Asian would be Vietnamese and Hmong American, or Cambodians and Laotians. 
and South Asian will be Indian American or also known as Asian Indian. Hmm. That's very um, important information to know as future counselors because you don't want to group all Asian Americans into one box. Right. So it's very useful information. Um, I guess we can discuss some values and beliefs that Asian Americans have in the United States. Mm -hmm. Many Asian Americans attend college because their parents place high expectations on education and they push their children to go to achieve. Asian Americans are raised to respect their elders no matter what they say. This can clash with the um, American views because when you go to college, professors want you to raise your hand and they want you to speak. They just want you to speak up more. Children um, in the Asian Americans, is, excuse me, children in the Asian American families are expected to strive for family goals and not to engage in behaviors that would bring dishonor to their family. Okay. All right. So, Kia, I, I really heard you mention family as an important value. Mm -hmm. um, so we did some research uh -huh. on what family means in the lives of college students or Asian American college students in particular. And what we found is that the family is a real, really, is really a pivotal force in their lives. Um, it's the main source of strength mm -hmm. and it's their main source of support. Of course they're taught to enhance the good name of the family through some kind of achievement in life. That could be either social, mm -hmm. it could be academic, which of course we're talking about right now, and it can also be economic, which means of course af after academic going on to get a really, you know, mm -hmm. good job where you're, you know, gaining economically. Um, also to guard the honor of the family through socially acceptable behavior, which you kind of mentioned before. So that means not acting out, n not really getting into trouble, right. you know, socially, you know, abiding by laws and different things like that. Mm -hmm. um, also, we found that there's higher levels of family conflict between um, college students mm -hmm. um, and students in general when there's authoritarian style of parenting found within the home. And like we mentioned in class, um, they have, or like we've read in the book, they have a collectivistic view. Mm -hmm. So it's more family, it's, it's a, centered around the kids, the mother, the grandmother, the parent, you know, everything right. all together. And um, many students are not free to choose their goals without consent mm -hmm. from their parents or their elders. So group values are supreme over individual motive. Um, also, family relationship problems can be the most difficult to solve. Mm -hmm. So if college students are, you know, having conflicts and different things like that with their families, mm -hmm. that might be the most difficult kind of issues that we as counselors may see um, because they're unable to turn to family and they're reluctant to seek out mental health care. So sometimes they internalize that and are dealing with that within themselves and not really letting anybody know what's going on. Hmm. Wow. So that family in the Asian American society is very important. Mm -hmm. And even when it comes to education, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, they want to go to school and do well, but they want to do well for their family. Right, exactly. Yeah. To honor that family name. Right, which mm -hmm. can be positive and in a way it can mm -hmm. hurt them also. Right. So I guess so. we talked about things that, I guess, such as their family that would, that is a factor when they go to college. Um, right now, I guess I just want to discuss some pros when they um, attend college in the United States. Many Asian Americans believe that they have more opportunities at colleges in the U.S. Many believe if they have went back to school in um, their country, then they wouldn't have as more I guess advanced opportunities such as um, things in the social justice field, um, just to become more of a strong student leader. Okay. So they have also stated that being able to attend college has strengthened their character. Um, one student from East Carolina University stated that since her school is in the South, she received stares, she received glances. But this just has made her a stronger person in the end. Um, a student from Ball State University stated that the school was definitely beyond her comfort zone, but living outside of the, outside of the box strengthened her identity. So 
I guess they um, have a lot of challenges, but it's also some pros that comes along with it. Okay. Um, after discussing um, some of the positives that Asian American students experience, um, why don't we discuss some of the challenges um, that college students may face? Um, some of the challenges that Asian American college students may face is that many Asian Americans feel that they aren't, there isn't enough interaction between them and other ethnic groups. So many Asian Americans feel as if they aren't warmly welcomed into groups that are white, mm -hmm. but on the same, not many Asian Americans prefer, or not many Asian Americans prefer to stick to each other and refuse to venture out side their cliques, or they refuse to venture outside their cliques, so they prefer to stick with um, one another. Also, um, many Asian Americans feel that their professors cut them off due to the fact that they expect Asian Americans to be quiet. So like you were talking about before with the family values and different things like that, there's this stereotype that, you know, they're quiet, they mm -hmm. don't speak up, so they may be cut off in class, which of course is very disrespectful right. of your students, and you know, you feel that from your professor and different things like that and of course it's just not going to make you feel like you're a respected person right. within that facility. Um, also existing research suggests that Asian American students encounter difficulties in seeking advice from academic counselors at community colleges. So I mean looking at that statistic or that, that challenge it seems like at these community colleges, they're thinking they can fend for themselves, so right. they don't need advice. But of course, you're an advice counselor. You need to give advice to anyone right. that is coming for advice. But I see it as a difficulty. Um, a couple more that I might um, want to touch on is that um, Asian Americans do deal with discrimination. They deal with prejudice, and they deal with hate crimes, even though sometimes it may seem like they're not the ones that are facing these issues. Mm -hmm. They are, a lot of times it's just that they are quiet about it, they brush it off, they don't really raise a lot of you know, noise about the issues that are going on. Right. Um, they also have issues um, during college and stuff with their personal identity mm -hmm. and poor self-image and um, dissatisfied with the social support that they receive. So social support meaning anybody, I mean, from professors to faculty to other students and different things like that, um, and even their family, the support that they need, like I mentioned before, so a lot of things can be internalized. Right. Those seem like some very difficult challenges. Um, glad that so. you shared those challenges with me. <laughs> um, so through our research, we found that many Asian Americans are reluctant to seek counseling, even after dealing with those challenges that you just discussed discuss mm -hmm. and we wondered beyond the family aspects what were some major factors for this minorities may perceive <coughs> excuse me mental health services as unrelated to their needs and thereby do not initiate services it is believed that little needs is focused on the psychological needs of minorities and counseling services and the common utilization of western oriented counseling services simply may not apply to them. Many Asian Americans feel as if they have to compromise their cultural values and traditions in order to fit in with the dominant culture. Asian American culture values is the main influence that keeps them from seeking mental health services. Okay. Um, well, Lakia, that definitely um, tells me that there, are, I see that these are some negative um, attitudes towards counseling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, what type of things do we need to do as counselors, or do we need to know as counselors to actually be able to counsel or just realize and know, you know, have knowledge for ourselves about counseling Asian American students? So what we need to know really is that, like we mentioned before, they're reluctant to seek counseling. Right. So, of course, we're going to see all kinds of students. Mm -hmm. But some, it, you may not get, you know, that many Asian American students coming in, even though they have the same issues as other students. Right. Um, they actually prefer to rely on culturally acceptable traditions of discipline and family order. Mm -hmm. um, mental health services um, 
the mental health services stigmas are barriers to the attainment of appropriate services that they're going to need. Um, also, they're fearful that family and friends may consider them emotionally unstable, which we talked about before in class, that emotionality, they don't really want to show that. And if their family is thinking that they're unstable, you know, they may have some conflicts with their family. Also, um, some of the dominant problems and issues that Asian Americans, college students face would be family conflict, mm -hmm. um, identity issues, acculturation and assimilation problems, not knowing, you know, if they want to assimilate completely or, you know, keep their culture exactly how it is or living on both sides of um, the fence, basically. Also, um, anxiety, depression, and suicide. Those are some of the major uh, factors that, um, that we probably will touch on a little bit later. Okay. So along with those, I guess um, I could discuss some other things that counselors may need to know. Mm -hmm. um, they should know that Asian Americans will come into counseling very reluctant to seek counseling. They may not want to discuss their ideas, their um, thoughts, what's going on in their head, so they're very reluctant overall. Um, they also must know that Asian Americans prefer to rely on culturally accepted traditions of discipline and family order. Um, they also need to know that mental health services stigmas serve a, as a barrier to the attainment of appropriate services and that they are fearful that their family and friends may not consider them emotionally unstable. Okay, so, um, so I've identified and we've identified um, just a few, um, but there's much more right. things um, that counselors need to know and much more information that needs to be found and utilized um, with knowing this information, what can we as counselors do to support these clients? Um, and what I found is that as counselors, um, we must be very familiar and knowledgeable about Asian American culture, as well as Asian Americans' experience in America. So we need to gain skills and knowledge, not just see them as any other client that's coming into your office. I mean, right. you're going to be able to help them so much more if right. you're aware of what they've had to deal with and what they've had to go through and things like that. Um, also, I found that counselors are an important link to help students deal with problems in school mm -hmm. as well as community and at home. So if you're, you're that important person that can help them um, get through all these different uh, issues that be, may, may be having. And as counselors, we must recognize that these students are caught in between two cultures. Right. So we're not knowing which way they're getting pulled more and how this is having an effect on them, but we must realize that it's two cultures that some of them are trying to live up to. And it's, it's very different cultural values mm -hmm. that they're trying to um, attain within their life. Um, also, it may be difficult to admit that they have problems. Mm -hmm. So as counselors, we need to respond by attending to academic or vocational problems and allow students to move at their own rate towards their emotional problems. Right. So of course, the presenting problem may be academic or vocational. And you got to get kind of to that underlying um, issue of what emotional problems they may be dealing with, such as depression or anxiety and things like that. Um, also, what's very important is to is the assurance of confidentiality. So, if you're letting them know that all the information that we share is going to be confidential, mm -hmm. um, it will off it will often they will often participate successfully once trust is developed. Okay. So you have to develop that trust and that therapeutic alliance to let them know that they can share you know openly with you, and most likely. Um, you can have some successful um, work with them. Okay. Right, so I guess overall, um, I can discuss some counseling interventions. Um, when Asian Americans come into counseling, um, they expect concrete goals and concrete strategies focused on solutions. Mental health professionals must be careful not to impose their techniques or strategies on the Asian American culture. Counselors should focus 
on the specific problems brought in by the client and help the client develop his or her own goals for therapy. Mm. Therapy should be time limited, focus on concrete resolutions of problems, and deal with the present or immediate future. The most common form of therapy, therapy used for Asian Americans are cognitive behavior and social, excuse me, solution focused strategies. It is important for counselors, academic advisors, and educators who work with Asian Americans to look behind the success myths and to understand the historical and current experiences of Asians in America. That was some really good information yes. that we found. Mm -hmm. um, I think it definitely needs to be investigated further in what kind of issues, especially within the college community, right. um, what type of issues that are kind of deep rooted that need to be, mm -hmm. you know, worked out. Especially, um, it's it's a really hard subject to think about when you're thinking about they're reluctant to come to counseling. So right. as a counselor, how am I going to help someone that's not going to come mm -hmm. to counseling? But um, I actually talked to someone that um. That told me actually um, that we need to, you know, I guess you know, get out into society and make it a, you know, reduce the stigma about mm -hmm. counseling. Right. You know, make it more available mm -hmm. um, rather than something that's kind of has to be secretive and different things like that. And then maybe they'll be a little bit more uh, willing to come in and and get those um, services that they actually need. And it's just very imperative as future counselors to continue to do research, mm -hmm. dig in deep, and find out everything that you can. Because even when like, we were conducting our research, mm -hmm. um, we, it was kind of hard for us to find research, research on Asian Americans in um, college. Mm -hmm. And that was strange in itself because <laughs> all of the information that is presented to us on whites in college or African Americans in college. Right. So why not have all that? you know, information on Asian Americans. So it's just important to get out there, talk to people, and just do the research on your own to find out the best ways to counsel Asian Americans. Thank you.